Minecraft's most popular mod. When you think of the Minecraft mods, which are the most famous or most popular, you probably think of the Aether mod or Too Many Items and its newer counterparts. And this is understandable. These mods were very impactful on the game, being some of the first to majorly change it, or just being so commonly used at the time that they became unforgettable. But you see, there is a mod in the game which is very famous, but probably doesn't come to your mind right away. It's a mod that's so commonly used that some players forget they are even using it. It's a mod which is so essential for certain players that they are unable to even play Minecraft without it. It's a mod that isn't flashy or attention grabbing, but it is incredibly important. And without it, Minecraft wouldn't be the same for many. Today, I'm going to be telling you the story of Optifine, Minecraft's most famous and likely most downloaded mod. So, let's get right into it. Oh, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out. Okay, so before we delve into the history, what exactly is Optifine? Well, to put it simply, Optifine is a Minecraft modification which improves the performance of the game through various methods of optimization. As stated on the official Optifine website, a double in average frame rate is common, as well as a decrease in lag spikes and smoothing of gameplay. However, over the past few years, the mod has evolved into something much, much more. While initially beginning as a simple optimization mod, the game now supports HD textures, shaders, dynamic lighting, increased render distances, various forms of upgraded settings that go beyond vanilla, and much, much more, as we will talk about later. But it wasn't always like this, and while Optifine may be the ultimate custom game modification today, back in Minecraft beta during early 2011, the mod was vastly different. Before Optifine existed and was being worked on by SP614X, another player, Skavolus, was becoming well known in the Minecraft community for creating performance enhancing mods. On December 30th, 2010, Skavolus made a post to the Minecraft forums, discussing his new game modification called McRegion. The mod optimized how chunks were stored on the disk as well as how they updated, which at the time were the main source of lag. Anyways, basically it just made the game more smooth and it made the pauses to load or save chunks as you move around the world far faster and therefore less noticeable. This was one of the very first Minecraft mods that improved game performance and you can see comments from various Minecraft players and would-be future members of Mojang stating how it made the game run so much better. In fact, the mod was so good that it was eventually added to the game as a storage format for Minecraft chunks in beta 1.3, and Skavolus is now credited in the official Minecraft credits under additional programming. To put it simply, the mod was so good, Mojang added it to the game. Anyways, Skavolus would continue to work on game improvements, and in early January of 2011, came out with another mod, Fast Render. As stated, Fast Render gave an increased and smoother frame rate when playing single player, and should also make memory use grow slower. This would all typically increase FPS by... 10. Now don't laugh, 10 FPS was a lot back then, especially because the game was still in early beta, beta 1.1 to be specific. Fast Render was then converted and updated into the Optimine mod, a mod which improved the FPS through various processes. Starting to sound familiar now? The Optimine mod would give gains of up to 20 FPS and started becoming popular when YouTubers such as Paul Sores Jr. would make videos about it. The mod functioned in Minecraft Beta 1.2 version 2 and Beta 1.3, but then Skavola stopped updating it, instead handing it over to SP614X. SP614X at the time had developed a mod called OptiFog, a mod which got rid of much of the annoying fog in Minecraft Beta, but also came with some performance enhancements. Many users were already using both Optifog and Optimine together as they had recently become compatible, so he was the perfect candidate to take over development. Anyways, as stated by SP614X on the old Optifog blog, the fog was robbing the vibrant colours of the valleys and mountains, turning them into washed out background paints, annoying him to the point of creating a mod to deal with it. Considering the mods were both used together so often throughout beta, SP614X would eventually merge them into an all-in-one mod and create the first version of Optifine in Minecraft Beta 1.7.3. So, let's talk a bit about the earliest version of the mod. First things first, just compare the video settings of vanilla and modded Beta 1.7.3. You can clearly see how many extra features Optifine has added. Optifine added a smooth lighting slider, a very important feature as smooth lighting was one of the biggest game performance killers, and being able to customize how much it was on, rather than just a simple off and on switch, proved very useful. There were also a variety of technical features that would deal with chunk loading issues, similar to mods Fast Render and McRegion we talked about earlier, such as smooth FPS and dynamic updates. 
but Optifine was already becoming much more than just a performance client. It also had various texture upgrades and game improvements. Better Grass made the grass textures connect on the sides looking very clean. You could make trees, leaves, water, rain and snow look better as well. You could even do some things that aren't even in the latest version of the mod, such as disable the weather, make it so it's always night or day, and even change the height of the clouds. One feature which really amazed me was Far View. Back in early versions of Minecraft, you only had four render distance options, tiny, short, normal and far, with far being 16 chunks. But Far View tripled the view distance. And of course, there is the famous zoom feature. So simple, but so useful. Let's move on now though. Optifine would continue to receive updates going to Minecraft's full release, improving and adding features along the way. In Minecraft 1.0.0, Optifine was able to support animated terrain and items, custom water, foliage, grass colors, block colors, and much, much more. Connected textures, one of my favorite features of Optifine was added not much later. Anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering was also included, making objects look much more smooth and less jagged. And the mod was made compatible with Forge, meaning its use only continued to increase as custom or large mod packs would require Optifine to just be playable. SP614X would also launch an official website for Optifine, where you could download its various and extensive list of versions, instead of having to risk getting a virus from the many dodgy websites, and yet some people still manage to. You could also purchase capes on the website, which would be visible to all Optifine users. Optifine began supporting custom skies, allowing for resource packs such as this to be possible, as well as other various high quality resource packs. The mod really was becoming the go-to mod for vanilla players. Eventually, Minecraft GLSL Shaders, one of the greatest mods of all time, which severely enhanced Minecraft's visuals with far more realistic and noticeable lighting, was incorporated into Optifine. If it wasn't already, this cemented Optifine as the ultimate mod for Minecraft, which upgraded vanilla in every way and shape possible, and there was now no reason to not use it. There's much, much more to the mod, but I would bore you if I went into detail on all its features. To say the least, Optifine was making up for the severe and somewhat concerning lack in game optimization from Mojang. While Minecraft has come a long way, the vanilla client is still seriously lacking in comparison to Optifine. What's funny to me is that even comparing Beta 1.7.3 Optifine, a mod which is 10 years old, with the latest release of Minecraft, and it's still missing many settings. And don't even begin to compare it to modern Optifine, which completely blows it out of the water. I talked about this briefly in my Minecraft Bedrock video, but the vanilla client performs abysmally. Optifine allows for the maximum render distance to go up to either 48 or 64 chunks, depending on the version, but vanilla has been capped at 32 for the longest time. And even then, using 32 render distance on vanilla and 32 on Optifine is noticeably different. 32 on vanilla still runs shockingly, and I was barely getting above 50 to 60 FPS with my RTX 3080 when standing still, and moving or flying around kills the game, dropping it to 30 or 40 FPS at best. Optifine has no such issues, and playing or just flying around at 32 render distance leaves me comfortably over 100 FPS. In general, vanilla performance is so much worse than Optifine. So, that begs the question, how is it possible that a game modification created and worked on solely for over 10 years by one individual is completely outperforming and outclassing the developers of quite literally the most popular game in the world? Well, it's simple and confusing at the same time. Basically, the way Minecraft Java Edition's algorithms, responsible for chunk rendering and many more functions is conducted, is wildly inefficient. So basically, Optifine just optimized the way the game is coded, finding shortcuts or various methods which are simply better and more effective. That being said, why can't Mojang do that? They surely have people who are just as competent, if not more competent than SP614X. And the answer to that, well, is... we don't know. Optifine has been around for over 10 years. Mojang would certainly be aware of it by now, but yet they haven't even tried to implement it or improve the game themselves. Well, that's not entirely true. You see, Mojang isn't one to necessarily shy away from their community and have openly embraced the addition of many features of popular mods into the game, similar to how Skavolus's McRegion mod was implemented. So, the age-old question becomes, why hasn't Mojang just adopted or implemented Optifine into their vanilla client yet? And that's a story in of itself. SP614X seems to be a pretty reserved guy, and there isn't much information out there. But the story goes, according to the official Optifine subreddit and Discord, that Mojang offered to buy Optifine at one point, but supposedly the deal never worked out because Mojang only wanted parts of the mod. That's as much official information as we have, but many users on the Optifine subreddit have stated that Mojang didn't want features such as Zoom, as well as many other performance increasing settings. SP614X wanted the entire mod implemented or nothing, and as such, the deal didn't work out. 
There are a few other unconfirmed theories, some being that the website's ad revenue and cave donation system would far exceed any offer Mojang would give to SP614X, and thus he wouldn't have much incentive to sell the mod. But that's also unconfirmed and purely speculative. There is also the issue of Optifine capes. As you would know, official Minecraft capes are quite rare and could only be obtained by attending Minecon, although new capes will soon be easily obtainable with the account migration. If Optifine was implemented into Minecraft, what would happen to the already existing unique capes? I think it's unlikely Mojang would simply allow them to stay as they are, due to them wanting capes to be rare to obtain, but removing them entirely would make the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of donators incredibly angry. It seems that the chance of a merger has only become even more unlikely as Optifine has continued to add more and more features over the years. What does the future look like then? Well, for the foreseeable future, Optifine probably won't be going anywhere and will continue to likely be the most used mod in the game's history. That being said, other game modifications such as Sodium have shown that Optifine can still be beaten, and who knows, maybe eventually there will be a mod that replaces Optifine. Or even better, maybe Mojang will finally catch up to the modding community and optimize the game themselves. Nevertheless, Optifine still remains a crucial mod for many players, and every new Minecraft update proves that, with many players complaining the game is unplayable and eagerly waiting for new Optifine versions to release. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you liked it by leaving a comment. Be sure to subscribe and join the Discord as well, and follow me on Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching.